Namaskar and welcome to Sunset Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and you're watching our show Perspective where we bring you detailed analysis of key national and international issues. Today we're going to talk about India's Africa outreach. For more on India's Africa outreach, we're today joined by a distinguished panel of experts. Let us first uh, meet uh, all three of them. We have with us in the studio, retired Mayor General Dhruv C. Katoch. He's the director of India Foundation. Uh, welcome to Sunset TV Studios, General Katoch. We're also joined by former Mr. Suresh K. Goel. And uh, Dr. Shiram Cholia, foreign affairs expert, is also joining us uh, via online virtual medium. Welcome, uh, both of you gentlemen, as well. Uh, Dr. Cholia, your views there on this aspect, which uh, Mr. Goel has pointed out, of course, uh, you know, uh, there uh, has a lot which has been done uh, with, with India as Africa outreach. And uh, uh, there are a lot of other opportunities as well for uh, both India and Africa to uh, cooperate further. But when we talk about uh, West Africa specifically, uh, you know, a bit more push is required, as Mr. Goel is referring to. Do you agree? Yeah, uh, definitely, Vishal. I think uh, our initial thrust was on the eastern seaboard of Africa because it is directly connected to the uh, western end of the Indian Ocean. So we saw this as one, uh, you know, broad Indian Ocean strategy of India. And so, and historically, the, our diaspora, Indian diaspora has also been present in larger numbers on this side in Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, Mozambique. So uh, we used to concentrate only on the Eastern side and the Southern side, but now uh, there has been, uh, you know, expectation for India to step in and play an important role uh, across the continent, mm -hmm. all 54 countries. So I think uh, when we convened the uh, India Africa Forum Summit uh, in the Modi administration, we managed to get all uh, heads of uh, government of all these countries uh, 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 to India. And that was a great start. And since then, Prime Minister has also enunciated our 10 guiding principles for engaging with Africa. And uh, I think the trade volumes have been growing. Uh, before the pandemic uh, hit and interrupted uh, all the supply chains and the flows, we are almost close to $80 billion. I mean, with the entire continent, not just one uh, any particular country of Africa. And now the potential is tremendous. So Vice President's visit is great, well-timed. Because now the Africans have come together and formed a African Continental Free Trade Agreement, ACFTA. That's okay. combining all the member countries into a single market like the European Union and reducing or almost eliminating all tariff barriers. So I expect this to be a bigger and bigger relationship. It's a big growth area for us. And of course, it also helps uh, to show our credentials in terms of uh, South-South cooperation for fellow developing countries. Senegal, for example, where Venkayaji uh, has just visited, Senegal, it, you know, viewers will be surprised to know their rice production uh, was increased sixfold due to India's support uh, and um, with irrigation and with water systems in Senegal. Likewise, we have done uh, sugar and agriculture growth uh, for uh, neighboring countries like Sudan and beyond. You know, so I think uh, going to West Africa is important. Uh, Nigeria is the main country there, is the number one leader, mm -hmm. but Senegal is also very important. Gabon is, of course, a smaller country. But I think we are also looking at other um, reasons why these countries are useful. Uh, for the moment, Senegal holds the African Union chair. Okay. So it convenes all the 54 member countries. So for India to access the markets, for India to be able to be accepted there in a bigger way, and for India to play a constructive role for the development of these countries, uh, Senegal is valuable as a India. conduit. And uh, same with uh, Gabon. Now we have uh, we share the Security Council non-permanent seats. They are also there, and we have to coordinate positions with them. So mm -hmm. apart from the trade and the commerce and the people-to-people -people linkage, there are also some intergovernmental mechanisms. The WTO system also. We are now coordinating closely with African countries for justice on uh, patents, on trade-related intellectual property rights, on vaccines. So the many things. I think it's a multi-dimensional development okay. and partnership, but with also a security angle, especially with the Indian Ocean side. But with the Atlantic coast, with the Western Africa, I think we are looking to just make a presence there. We okay. have opened more embassies, as you have just informed the viewers. Uh, Modi government has uh, said that Africa is uh, important to us. It's primary to us. Indeed. It's not Indeed. secondary to us. And that's how we also become an important power uh, in, in the globe, in, in the international order, by being present in other countries of the global south. Okay, Dr. Cholia, do you agree? You know, these four areas identified by Mr. Goel there, infrastructure, skill development, agriculture, minerals, the idea is to identify what is it that, that they need and what is it that we can provide and then take the cooperation forward. Yeah, Vishal, in fact, uh, in health and education also, these are, you know, fundamental sectors uh, for Africa's rise. In the, they have the African Union has the agenda 2063, 
they have got a roadmap uh, to achieve major developmental goals. So health and education also, I think India is going to be a major partner. In fact, we have the advantage of the English language, uh, which is quite uh, popular in many countries of Africa, if not all. Uh, and these things, uh, you know, the Chinese cannot provide. So I think our um, Pan-African uh, e-network for um, e-medicine and um, e-education, this has really picked up. We are now reached a more advanced stage in this, and we are training thousands of young Africans uh, through remote and also bringing some of them here to India, and our trainers also go there. So these kind of mobility uh, initiatives to skill and build the capacities, which Ambassador Goel is talking about, that is really going to be our forte. Um, and uh, as far as the physical infrastructure goes, you know, I think we need to do what we call the North-South-South uh, South cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, we need uh, a richer country. Uh, we have paired up with Japan in the past to do the Af Asia-Africa growth corridor. And we have also now committed with Germany to jointly do uh, projects in Africa, uh, in third countries uh, or, or, or multiple countries of Africa. So this kind of model where, you know, we have the human resources and the capacity building part, uh, but we don't have the finances to give out large scale loans uh, and, uh, to build infrastructure, physical infrastructure, the way the Chinese are doing. Uh, but then if Germany or Japan comes in, then, you know, or even the US in some cases, um, you we could potentially partner with them. France okay. also, you know, we have a strong strategic relationship with France. France has a lot of uh, control or dominance over uh, parts of West Africa what they call francophonie. It's a little controversial because of the neo-colonial impact of France, but wherever possible, we should triangulate. So that way, you know, uh, we can be more credible. And of course, um, the thing is, uh, Africans really look up to India for um, uh, medical tourism and such things and bringing more Africans and exposing them to India. Thousands of African students continue to come in, even in spite the, of the pandemic, uh, to come in and study in our universities under multiple programs, so those kind of things are lasting and they will okay. have a you know, more uh, impact in the longer term because it, India re has, has to get to the hearts and minds. And of course, we are already doing it. So maybe we need to scale up. I mean, sometimes we say small is beautiful and in, in China is, you know, committing these gigantic projects and we do small, meaningful, quick impact projects. Uh, fine, quick impact projects are good. Development uh, uh, initiatives are good, but I think Indeed. sometimes we, we have to also scale up with our ambition to become a leading power in the world. Okay. I think Africans, like uh, uh, Ambassador Goel was mentioning, also expect that India sometimes uh, can help as a substitute to China. Not always. I mean, they build the hospitals, but we provide the nurses. The software side, the human Indeed. skills side, those things are our strengths. And that's where I think we need to step up, maybe focus on some key sectors and do it on a larger scale okay. than we have done in the past. Okay. Indeed, that is significant. It can be small, but it has to be significant and it has to be viable. Uh, Dr. Cholia, you wanted to say something quick, uh, if you can have a quick concluding one. Yeah, Vishal, I just wanted to mention that our investors, Indian investors in Africa, mostly concentrated in services sector, you know, like telecom, uh, Bharti Group, for example, is a huge player there. So information is something where, you know, we need to influence more minds. And I believe, you know, the Chinese, their newspapers, the television channels, their digital mo mobile apps, they're all over the place in Africa. Wherever you go there, you find Chinese information in local languages. They've got correspondence there. So they're, you know, it's a kind of almost, uh, you know, hegemonic uh, presence there. Indeed. We don't need to do that. But we certainly need to give an Indian perspective on our approach to Africa. Sometimes Africans ask, what are you here for? Do you want our minerals? What is your purpose here? Although PM has uh, articulated it very well and our diplomats try to do it, still there's a lot of confusion because of this China comparison. So what is it about India brand in Africa? I think we need to clarify it with uh, you know, greater um, simplicity and also in a way to get across to ordinary people okay. across the continent. Okay, so, so the thought and the idea is that what is it that we can do? What is it that India can do for uh, the African countries? Uh, and uh, in turn, of course, uh, Mutual benefits with uh, the cooperation on various aspects. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Cholia, uh, and Mr. Goyal again, and uh, General Katocha as well for sharing your views.